In this video, I'll be talking about the purine salvage path. This is on page 71st in 2012. I'm not a big fan of how they organize that, uh, the purine salvage pathway, so I'll have my own twist into it. So let's get right into the purine salvage pathway. Obviously, we know that this is the this is the pathway where we do not make purine and pyrimidine from scratch de novo. We don't make it de novo, but we kind of recycle them from what we have. We recycle from them from DNA. We recycle from them from RNA, high energy compounds, GDP, GTP, ATP. We recycle our um, our bases from high energy compounds. So from these high energy compounds, the next thing we have here is we get something called AMP. Okay, AMP, as we know that this gives rise to our adenosine, and from adenosine we deaminate adenosine, and we get I no sin and we deaminate it with the enzyme deaminase okay from inosine we get hypoxanthine okay and from hypoxanthine we get xanthine from xanthine we get uric acid I'm going to actually write it on the side because it's going out of my screen so from xanthin we get uric acid and where does uric acid go uric acid is excreted from our body from xanthin to uric acid this conversion is achieved by xanthin oxidase okay all right but this is not all though. I have really skipped the most important step in our salvage pathway. And that is, from hypoxanthine, we make something called IMP. Okay, so I'm going to write IMP around here. So from hypoxanthine, we make IMP. From IMP, we make AMP. And we kind of make AMP and then AMP can be used in something else. This way every time we make uh, a, a base, every time we have a high energy compound, it doesn't have to be excreted through uric acid because a lot of energy and a lot of substrates are necessary to make our purines and the pyrimidines and if we have to get them out of the system really faster, really quickly, and they just become uric acid and exit the body, then we have to make those purine and the pyrimidines constantly, and that would be kind of not an efficient way of uh, working. And we know our body is very, very efficient in a lot of things, and the way it, it does, and this is just a way of, you know, exiting the uric acid pathway and kind of checking in back through the IMP and back to AMP, and AMP can then be used as a high energy compound. Okay, so now the conversion of hypoxanthine to IMP is achieved by a very important enzyme, and that enzyme is HGPRTase. When you have HGPRTase deficiency, we have a disease called Lisch Nehan syndrome. And Lisch Nehan syndrome gives uh, mental retardation, cerebral palsy. Uh, the kids are going to come with self-mutilation. There's going to be hyperuricemia. Okay? And why hyperuricemia? Because of lots of uric acid is being made because this bypass pa pathway is not accessible to them. So they have to come in this direction. They're, it's an excellent recessive disease, so they're born with it. So that's what we get if we have increased HG, if we have deficiency in HGPRTAs. Also, these people with lots of uric acid is also going to present with gout because uh, lots of uric acid is going to slow down um, the excretion pathway. Decreased excretion of, of uric acid is going to give us gout. That's another aspect. That's another clinical uh, association with it. See how this step is achieved by deaminase. 
okay this deaminase if we have deaminase deficiency if we have adenosine deaminase deficiency then we have skid and skid is a per, is, is a kid uh, with no BRT cells remember that movie the bubble boy movie um, the, the kid who lived in a bubble um, the kid who had skid uh, they are going to have infections from a very early age and they die very quickly because they cannot live with so many infections and ultimately their body gives in that is this is also an autosomal recessive disease and uh, the, the best treatment for them is enzyme placement and bone marrow transplant so that is a clinical correlation with deaminase so this is one thing the other uh, other thing that I want to mention here is that from our high energy compounds we also get something called GMP obviously uh, the other uh, adenosine uh, sorry the other purine from GMP we get guanosine and from guanosine we get guanine okay now from guanine we can have another salvage pathway back to GMP and this is achieved by the enzyme HGPRTase again again there is a sol salvage pathway the same enzyme salvages both the pathway guanine back to GMP hypoxanthine back to IMP both of these are achieved by HGPRTase okay so one thing I want to mention here is if you remember my purine and the pyrimidine synthesis you can go back and look at it we talked about how IMP gave rise to GMP and AMP okay so this is what I'm talking here IMP gave rise to AMP and it also gives rise to GMP okay this is what ties both this pathway and this pathway together okay this uh, this is what I found that first aid made it a lot confusing and they could have done it very simply just like that okay so that's another thing that I want to just throw it out there so before I end this uh, in this video I just want to mention that I want to go back to our purine and pyrimidine synthesis video see in our pyrimidine synthesis and I would like to and I would like you to pay a little attention here because it could be a little confusing for some people see we have to understand that our body is interconnected with each other and each uh, system is in interconnected with the other system and making that connection is the number one thing in USMLE and in practicing medicine in general now we know that PRPP is a common substrate from which we have both purine and the pyrimidine synthesis in a way right because PRPP is the connecting uh, substance between both the pathway we need PRPP in both so Lishnihan syndrome or the salvage pathway is only part of the purine pathway right the purine synthesis a purine salvage deals with the Lishnihan and when we don't have the salvage we have lots of uric acid we just talked about it right now if we have Lishnihan syndrome in a kid we're not going to have salvage pathway right as a result we are going to be making lots and lots of AMP and lots and lots of GMP right because we're making a lot of these because we have to constantly make we cannot salvage it as a result we're gonna have lots and lots of IMP as a result we're gonna have lots and lots of PRPP because these process have to be very very active and if we have lots and lots of PRPP see how it can trickle down through the pyrimidine synthesis as well the pyrimidine synthesis is also going to be increased somewhat because of increased PRPP because PRPP is the connecting substance between purine and the pyrimidine synthesis 
So if they ask you something like this, that, you know, why there is an increased production of pyrimidine, then the connection is because there is increased PRPP in our pathway, and PRPP is the connecting substance, so both the pathways are going to show increased production, even though salvage pathway only deals with the purine pathway.